Okay, this will be the royal, specifically the queen. We'll see what's on her mind, and I think she's getting a second wind. I hope you like the video. If you do like it, please do like it. And if you haven't subscribed, please do subscribe. It means an awful lot, and it helps me keep making these videos. And uh, thank you very, very much for watching. Hi, I'm Mark, and this is my journey through tarot. Come on. You know, it could be that the queen has been a little blue, but I believe that she has gotten a little wind in her sails, and this could carry her through for quite some time. Tell me what you think. Of course, her mother, Queen Elizabeth, of course, she wasn't a numbered queen. You know, we had Queen Elizabeth I, then we had the Queen Mother, Queen Elizabeth, and now we have uh, Queen Elizabeth II. But I think that her mother is going to give us a clue as to where that energy comes from. I mean, she kept on going like an energizer bunny and with dignity, and this queen has all of that. So this is the Crow Tarot by M.J. Cullinan. I suppose that's how that's pronounced. And uh, they come in a really nice, sturdy box. Um, if you got this as a gift, you feel like, you know, that was a nice gift. The uh, guidebook is pretty interesting. Uh, it has uh, good uh, suggestions on how to use these cards for divination. And then right in the back here, it talks about the artist and the author of Crow Tarot. And it just says that Margot Jones, so that is MJ in the MJ Cullinan, is a Seattle-based artist, writer, mother, and lover of all things magical, especially crows. She attended Parsons School of Design, yet her unique te uh, technique of telling stories through digital collage is self-taught and has been her passion for over 10 years. And I don't know that's as of when. Um, nature and its creatures are a familiar theme in MJ's work. However, having grown up in the south of Boston, her collages are heavily influenced by the energy of the city. Her work often merges the two worlds. Her path into the world of tarot was a beautiful accident that came out of a difficult time in her life. The process of creating Crow Tarot helped her rediscover her own wings, though at the time she didn't realize how life-changing the project would become. She simply fell in love with the process, the messages, and the feeling uh, each card revoked. The Crow Tarot, MJ's first published deck, has achieved a significant following and recognition with crow lovers and the tarot community. When MJ is not making art or writing for her Crow Tarot blog, Hmm. She's spending time with her daughter River, playing in nature, practicing magic, and finding new sources of inspiration. So I love that, to, to know a little bit about the artist. And uh, like I say, the descriptions here are useful in the divination, especially when so much thought is going into the cards. The, the cards themselves are just really amazing, and I love using these cards a lot. They've got a sort of a, an antique uh, kind of patina to the cards. I mean, it's not really a patina because it's fake. But you can see how each card has a little wornness about it that kind of makes them uh, fun to use. And they're beautiful cards. And, you know, what, the reason I do this is for those folks who don't get to see uh, full decks of tarot cards very often. At least this way you get a little preview of some of these cards. And uh, it's a nice way to uh, shuffle up the cards without damaging them. I like to keep my cards in good shape as long as I can. And um, so that is... The Crow Tarot. Okay, so this will be the Queen, okay? And what is in store for her? Is there a second act, uh, if you want to call it that, for her in this? What a lot of us want to think of, uh, of, of something that's coming to an end here. But could it be that this Queen has some gumption, some surprises in store for us? So these cards are perfect for that because the Crow is absolutely uh, unstoppable. The Crow will is smart, uh, resourceful, um, doesn't give up, uh, will keep coming back again and again and again to uh, complete his task. So this will be a full Celtic cross for the Queen. What can we expect for the, from the queen? Six cards. One, two, three, 
four, five, and six. The queen. What does Madge have in store for us? Signifier card for the queens. Perhaps second act. So this is the two of cups. Two of cups is compassion, is partnerships, it's uh, uh, partnering with someone to make a thing happen. There could even be an oath involved here. Okay, so I like that. This queen already seems as if she's understood that she has to put together some very strategic, some very useful partnerships to continue her reign, and she's done that. Challenge to that is this King of Pentacles, because I, I believe she wants to remain the most valuable member of that monarchy. That's what it seems like to me. She's not ready to throw in the towel by any means. I think she's starting to shift on her feet and understand where she's come to be, and now she's planting her feet, and uh, I just feel like she's finding a second wind. Uh, the base of this reading then, with this Page of Pentacles, so the page is the very uh, least uh, effective of the royal cards, but this page shows us that he's got a great big offer of, of, of value, okay? So, it may be that although she wants to continue uh, as the king of that value, that she understands she's coming into this with a, uh, from a, a diminished um, uh, point from where she may have been, you know, a year or more before. The past of this reading, then, is a Seven of Cups. You know, the Seven of Cups, I want to look that up because I want to make sure I don't get this wrong. The Seven of Cups is... Um, Oh, yeah, that's illusion and delusion. So the Seven of Cups is, is looking at the choices that she has. She comes into this really evaluating those choices that, that she has at her disposal. Yep, that's perfectly right. So the Seven of Cups is uh, knowing that there's a multitude of ways that you can go about a thing and uh, making a thoughtful choice uh, before you move forward uh, with whatever it is that you're doing. In the sky of this reading is the Tower. Okay, so that's what's, uh, you know, pending over her. She knows this is what's coming. It hasn't arrived. It will be coming. That's why this is up in the sky. The tower card just let, reminds us that this queen uh, is wise and knows exactly what's going on, and she hasn't closed her eyes to the realities of what uh, uh, lie ahead. But the likely outcome of this for the queen with this five of wands well, that's interesting because the Five of Wands is conflict. Okay, it's useless sort of uh, arguing or embattlement. Uh, this, um, um, you know, a, a group of crows uh, is not called a flock. They're called a murder of crows. So this murder of crows is running around with these uh, sticks just swinging every which way. But look, the queen has got the most powerful stick, and she's flying above the, above the flock, okay, in charge of the confusion that's below. Interesting. So for the self of this question, what is ahead for the, our queen? The self of that question, well, with this nine of swords, this is a nightmare. What is ahead is, in fact, a nightmare. She doesn't want to be where she is. She would rather have turned the, the clock back, you know, 10 years and be in the, in the position where um, she doesn't have this nightmare hanging over her head. But that is where she is. She's in the middle of a nightmare and having to know how to navigate through it towards that inevitable end. The environment that that's in, however, is the Wheel of Fortune. Okay, I always like to say that the Wheel of Fortune is always turning in a positive direction, okay? doesn't mean that we can't come into some difficult times, but there's plenty of time for that wheel to right itself and to keep us going in the positive direction. So this uh, nightmare is in the environment of a very fortuitous, uh, knowledgeable uh, queen. The uh, hopes and the fears for this Hang man. The hope would be is that there can be a suspension of time, a way of looking at this from another angle. She's not the queen that she was. She has to look at this as the queen that she is right now and make the best use of that. And then the sky of this reading, the likely outcome of the whole thing is the emperor. This queen is going to show us how a ruler rules. Okay? You don't throw in the towel. You understand your value, and you exercise your value right up to the very end. So we'll go over it one more time. So this queen is uh, signified by this partnership, this two of cups, these lovers. Okay, understanding there's an oath involved here, and there's a responsibility towards each other. 
uh, then it's challenged uh, by this King of Pentacles, which is the queen that she is, okay, right now. Underpinned by this Page of Pentacles, uh, understanding that her, um, her value uh, may seem diminished. But that's your value is only diminished if you don't understand where your value is. Okay, so she's a less than she was, but that doesn't mean she can't be everything that she has to be. Uh, this illusion and delusion, this seven of cups, just tells us we come into this with some choices that have to be made. The tower card is what is inevitable and pending. Okay, it's just plain as the nose on your face. The uh, likely outcome of the first part of this is you know the conflict, but with the queen flying high over that murder of crows uh, with her uh, plan firmly in grip. The self of this question is that nightmare of what is impending eventually, but it's in the environment of this wheel of fortune. This has been a very fortuitous uh, reign for this queen and will remain so. It's in the hopes of the fears of understanding that now is the time to reevaluate how you're approaching this issue and she will remain the emperor of her monarchy. Did I get it right? Did the cards get it right? I think the cards always get it right. It's just, did I read it right? So let me know what you think. I'm very interested to know. I look at all those comments. Thank you very much. I'm Mark, my journey through tarot. Tomorrow's another day. Stop by, we'll do it again. Ciao for now.